Thanks to the support as a channel member, Liam Cooney. Well, this is weird. Part-time manager in League Two. Didn't think I'd be doing this. I guess I still have to hang out at the Snow Dome, which is, I mean, how is that going to work when they interview me on the telly? And welcome to part 20 of Non-Need to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we are going to play our first couple of games in the Football League, in League 2, away against Gillingham and at home against Walsall. We play in the Moose Cup in between. And honestly, who cares? I'm not going to show you that one uh, because who cares about the Moose Cup? But we care about the fact that we're a Football League team. Look at us go. We might even survive as well. Wouldn't that be a thing? If you missed yesterday's transfer special, you might not be completely familiar with all of these new faces that we've got at the club. So I'd suggest you go back and familiarise yourselves with those, um, including record signing Gene Kennedy, who you should be familiar with because he was here on loan previously, um, but has now joined us for £71,000. We are, you can tell we're in the big leagues now we're spending that kind of money, but this is our team for our first ever game in the Football League away against Gillingham. It's Walsh in goal, a back four of Ishmael, Brown, Kakuri and Davies, Alcock and Kennedy at the base of the midfield, Musa, Berry and Lee, Jack Leahy that is. We've got two of them now and a Camrich up front who of course spent last season coming off of either wing. So there's things for us to, to figure out and try and learn in these early matches. Uh, one of the things obviously we want to try and learn is are we good enough with this squad to compete in the Football League? But we're also trying to work out who our starting striker is because we've got four of them, but all of them can also play out wide. And uh, yeah, uh, there's probably going to be at least two or three of them on the pitch at any one time. We just need to work out which one of them is going to be our 30 goal a season centre forward because of course we want a 30 goal a season centre forward. That would be jolly nice. Um, but I mean, look how little our goalkeeper is. Oh, this is going to be a problem. Oh dear me. This is what happens when you sign a miniature goalkeeper. I worried about it when I brought him in. I suspect yesterday's comments, I haven't, yesterday's video's not out yet as I'm recording this, but I suspect yesterday's comments are absolutely full of people telling me not to sign a five foot 10 goalkeeper because things like that will happen. How long until Rose is back in goal? We need to monitor how often things like that happen. That, it literally went over his head. Right, let's hope some of the other new boys aren't quite so much of a disappointment as this goalkeeper I've already decided I don't like. Uh, Davis, at right back, plays it into Leahy. Leahy, looking for options, trying to find Yusuf, and it's a good saving challenge from the Gillingham defender. I can't believe that happened so early as well. But Berry trying to grab an early equaliser. Still less than three minutes on the clock. Walsh has been humiliated, and I'm already thinking maybe we need to go and find a a full-size goalkeeper that we can bring in, on, bring in on loan before it's too late. We've got nearly a month left of this transfer window, and of course we are now in the world of the transfer window being in the Football League. It's something we've not had to deal with before. Um, so, I mean, Van Kooten, our third-choice goalkeeper, is six foot four. so maybe we just play him. I mean, he's not as good as Walsh, technically, but I can't get over the fact that that's just gone way over his head like that. Very disappointing. Let's offer some encouragement to the boys um, playing in their first ever game in the Football League. And uh, at the moment, not necessarily looking like we're going to have a very enjoyable season. Ismail plays it forward to Musa. Musa on the left-hand side. Might, I think he's probably the most likely to end up as our centre-forward. But he starts out wide today and has the effort from range. And it whistles past the post. We've had a couple of decent opportunities. We've actually been the better team on XG for shots created. Um, shots on target. We're ahead on all of the stats apart from the, the only one that matters, as I believe the cliche goes. Um, and Gillingham just comfortably knocking the ball around. I think we're going to see more of this this year. Teams being much more comfortable on the ball, which means we might have to shift up the way we play because our, our methods have very much been smash and grab, get it out wide, get it into the get it into the men in the middle. And I don't know if we're going to get away with that at this level. We might need something a little bit more technically proficient, which I guess now we've got someone like Kennedy to step into that midfield with the quality that he brings. It should be something we're capable of doing. And now we are a full-time team training full-time. We could potentially play a more demanding, higher tempo system as well. Although it must be remembered that a lot of the players who were here last year are still on part-time contracts, as am I. We didn't go through giving everybody full-time full-time contracts 
because we just didn't have the money to do it. So we've got a strange mix of all the new guys are full-time, all the loans are full-time. There's some players who were here before who've had contract extensions like Kakuri, like Berry, who are also full-time. But then you have the likes of a Camrich, Leahy, uh, Brown, our captain Brown, um, who are on part-time contracts still because they... Uh, they either didn't want to sign new contracts in the case of Brown or we just ran out of money to be able to afford to do it with the likes of a Cambridge. That's good work from Berry again. And he's forced a corner here, I think. And it's going to be an in-swinger. It's going to be... Br Cent Brown is our centre-back taking the corner. I mean, we've got a set-piece coach now. So glad we had our centre-back taking the corner. Good work, set piece coach. Although, to be fair, that's why you do it, because that's lovely tracking back from Brown. And now Leahy trying to conjure something up from the right-hand side. Finds the cross. It's a big, deep cross. We had so much success with that kind of cross last season. Unfortunately, not on that occasion, but now Ismail's going to try and drive it across. Finds Musa, and Victor Musa has his first goal in the Tamworth shirt. And, uh, I mean, did we even get the flashing lights at the bottom of the screen? We've gone from alien invasions in non-league, so I don't think we even got the goal alert there, but it definitely went in. I mean, I guess we've not brought very many fans or perhaps there's not enough fans to make it flash. But that's a good finish from Musa, and that is a step towards him becoming our centre-forward because he's shown that he can finish, whereas a Camrich, not having the best of times playing centre-forward today, but of course, almost all of his goals last year did come from that kind of position that Musa was just in, out wide. Right, let's, uh, let's take a Camrich off. We are going to, I think, stick Musa up. Are we going to put Musa up front? We've got Kiate, who I am excited about. We've also got Tom Leahy. Can I have two Leahys on the pitch at the same time? I can't say one of them. Right, you know what? We are going to bring Kiate on. I want to have a look at him. Coming on as a pressing forward. Um, we're also going to bring one of the other new boys, Jaden Camason. On to play it right back. He came in from Manchester United. We're going to have five substitutions now, which is awesome. So I think we can actually take Leahy for Leahy, do that as a change. And we're going to play Tom Leahy as an inside forward rather than Jack Leahy as a winger. And Kuyate up front. Just, uh, like I say, try something a little bit different. We've been very much about wingers getting crosses in before. We've now got a striker who's going to run around a lot and two guys who are going to cut in off the wing to try and get on the end of crosses that might be delivered by fullbacks. Walsh, once again, looked like he wasn't going to reach that if it had stayed under the crossbar. I'm going to try not to write him off immediately. It's not going well for him. That's a lovely flick on from Camason though. And Kuyate gets through on goal. <laughs> I think we're going to have some fun with this guy. He's big. He's fast. I said it in yesterday's episode. He's very, very raw. But if we can get it right with him, he's going to be a superstar. Cross comes in looking for Kuyate. Uh, can't find him. And it comes to Adam Berry, who's going to try and get that ball back into the area via Kakuri and now Kamason. But it, it just kind of breaks down. But there's Kamason again playing it forward to Berry, who, I mean, Berry looks like he's settled right into this league. Skips past his man, leaves two players for dead. And now Ishmael on the left hand side. Can he find the cross? His three men in the middle. Cross comes in. Kuyate is the one that it's going towards. And he's won a penalty. He's been held down there. It's a penalty kick and we've got the opportunity to take the lead in our first ever game in the Football League away from home. It's going to be Musa for his second of the day and he scores it. And it's 2-1 to Tamworth. 15 minutes to go. That would be... I mean, this would be ideal. If we could come away from home on the first day of the season and pick up a win... That's super duper. Might even convince the manager to give me a new contract because if we've built another good team here that can be in a promotion push again, and it's very early to say that, but if we have, I really am starting to lean towards staying with Tamworth for a long, long time from a footballing perspective. But it only works if they can give you the money to justify it. Right, two changes. Brook comes on for Kennedy. New boy Grant comes on for Berry. And we look to just see this one out, please and thank you. We have been so much better than Gillingham for all of the match stats. We definitely deserve this today. And fingers crossed we can grab a third here to put it beyond doubt. It's going to be Brown once again taking the corner. Do we not have any other left footers in the squad? And there is Tom Leahy and he's scored on his debut as well. And that should rubber stamp it. 3-1 away from home. We're playing a league game in a ground that's got a big telly behind the goal. It's a wonderful thing. It's a good header from Leahy. And that's, uh, I guess that is justification for the new set piece coach who came in over the summer and we are top of the league boys and girls it's where we hang out we're very used to being up towards the top end of the table more of this 
please. I still have no idea who my front three is. It was a good finish from Leahy. Obviously, Moose has got two goals today. So the one thing that probably isn't going to be our striker is a Camrich who can move back out wide. That's lovely work from Kiate. He's offside, but it was a lovely touch. Oh, I think I'm going to like that boy. I'm excited by this team again. I really, really, really love what we're doing here at Tamworth. Someone speak to the board and get them to offer me a sensible contract. I want to stay, but I do need to be paid to stay. Right, I'm going to play the Carabao Cup game off camera because nobody has ever cared about the Carabao Cup in the history of the world, apart from Manchester United fans, apparently. And uh, we'll be back for the Walsall game. Folks, I just want to take a moment to thank today's episode sponsor, Manscaped.com. The holiday season is here and it's time to give yourself the gift of grooming and self-care. Today, I've got something special that's going to take your grooming game to the next level. The Manscaped Performance Package 5. 5.0 Ultra. Allow me to open it for you. Ooh. Now, this isn't just a package. It's a complete grooming experience. Let me walk you through what makes this package a perfect purchase this holiday season. Firstly, it includes the Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra, which is a grooming powerhouse. It comes with two interchangeable skin safe blade heads. You've got the skin safe trimmer blade and also the skin safe foil blade. Your grooming routine just got an upgrade. And let's not forget the Weed Whacker 2.0, which is perfect for taming those unruly nose and ear hairs. It's also equipped with skin safe technology to help reduce nicks and cuts, and it's waterproof so you can use it in the shower. And to make your grooming experience even more comfortable, there's the Crop Soother Ball Aftershave Lotion. It's dermatologist tested for sensitive skin, alcohol free, fragrance free, and it helps soothe razor burn and itching as hair regrows. And then for that final touch, the Crop Preserver is a clear drying, quick absorbing lotion with soothing aloe vera. It's formulated for below the waist and it's free of aluminium, cruelty free, dye free, paraben free, and vegan. And not only all of that, but the package also comes with two free gifts. A pair of Manscaped pants and the Shed 2.0 travel bag. This holiday season, head over to the Manscaped website and gift yourself or someone special the ultimate grooming experience. It's a gift that keeps on giving and you'll start the new year looking and feeling fantastic. So don't wait, head over to manscaped.com and get your hands on the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra today. And when you use my promo code LELUJO, you'll get 20% off plus free international shipping at checkout. That's 20% off plus free shipping with code LELUJO at manscaped.com. Trust me, your jingle balls will thank you. Well, we put out a rotated side in the Moose Cup against Morecambe and, I mean, we did quite well once we made some substitutions. Struggled a little bit with the uh, with the starting team, um, but we brought on the A team up front uh, to end the game and a Camrich got a couple, Kennedy got the third and uh, we ended up getting through to the second round where we're going to play against West Brom. So maybe we will care about the Carabao Cup a little bit after all because that's a relatively local-ish derby, I guess. Um, as is this game against Walsall and uh, this is the team we're going to put out there for that one it's Walsh in goal a back four of Clayton Brown Kakuri and Davies Olcock and Kennedy in midfield a Camrich moving back out to the left which is where he played when he came on in midweek and got those two goals Musa came on up front in that game so he starts there today Berry in the middle and then Young on the right hand side he played it well he did he I think he started I'm sure I started him I did start him I started him in the middle against Morecambe he was more effective when I moved him out onto the right-hand side. So he gets a start out there. That's the one spot in the attack that's up for grabs, really. I think with Musa and a Camrich, I'm just going to be trying to work out which one of them is going to start up front and which is going to be on the left. Um, there is always the opportunity to do the press the button that has them swap around mid-match. I know that's still a thing, um, and it's something I've not used for a few years, so we could maybe even have them swapping around mid-match. But that right-hand side spot is is still up for grabs. It could be Young. It could be one of the Leahy's. And, oh, I'm so glad that that's still happening. Musa has won the ball, though, and bursts through and hits the post. And, I mean, that's... Uh that's a decent example of why he should be playing as the more central of the two. Certainly a lot more direct towards goal than a Cambridge would be in that situation, although his finishing did leave a little to be desired. A first start of the season today for Clayton as well at left back, who did nothing wrong last year, uh, but 
I mean, we've just got other players who can play there this year. So everyone's going to get their opportunity. Everyone who's made it into this 25-man squad will get opportunities in this first few weeks of the season for me to work out who is going to be the best 11. So I still don't really know. Um, but Young, trying to uh, trying to beat his man, doesn't really succeed. But that goal looks familiar, doesn't it, boys and girls? Of course, Cambridge started last season on the right, didn't he? Because he was doing that with Clayton's crosses. But this time, it's the cross from Davies. A Cambridge coming in off, off the one of the wide areas. He's six foot one. He's very good in the air. You would think logic would dictate he would play up front, but he's just so much more effective doing that, coming in off either wing as an inside forward and getting on the end of crosses. So I think that's probably decision made. A Cambridge has got three goals in... 20 minutes of game time between the last 10 minutes of the cup game and the first 15 of this all of them coming in off the wing getting on the end of crosses you saw in the uh, in the previous one that the two assists were both from Sam Paul who started at right back in that game he scored three identical goals in like 25 minutes of game time and done some excellent tracking back there to win the ball back and now Young, he's overhit that a little bit to try and beat his man, but seems to have some pace about him. And there is Musa to tuck away the uh, the loose ball off the shot from Berry. I think it's being disallowed. But, I mean, Musa looked lively there, but he did also look very, very offside. We don't even get to see a replay. He's so far offside. Uh, right, Brown, looking for options ahead of him, finds a Camrich, who has started very, very brightly today, as has Olcock bursting out of midfield. And now Kennedy to Young. And Davies has got so much space to pick his cross, but instead plays it into Young. And Young's fouled. That's a penalty. Thank you very much, boys and girls. We'll take that one and hopefully do a goal. Um, who's our number 15? We've got to learn the new squad numbers. Musa is the number 15. And he scores. Lovely, lovely, lovely. The aliens seem very interested in it as well, which is jolly nice also. I mean, that's certainly a reason for leaving Tamworth because I, I mentioned it a couple of episodes ago. Um, I was having these same problems when I was in the lower leagues on Twitch in Turkey. And as soon as we moved to a bigger club of a bigger stadium, that problem has just gone away. It's very much a small stadium problem, which as much as I'm loving my time here at Tamworth, it's fo if football manager's broken and that keeps happening, that's a reason to get away from these small grounds. Um, the alternative, of course, would be for us to build an enormous ground here at Tamworth, and that would also solve the problem, or at least knock the roof off of this one, because I think it's the roof that's glitching out. It's interesting to see that Morecambe are the one team above us in the league at the moment, and our reserves <laughs> beat them quite comfortably in midweek. I mean, you often see this in real life. I mean, Gateshead are right up here with us as well. Um, if you're a team that's good enough to be promoted into League Two, you're often a team that's good enough to be promoted out of League Two as well because there's not a lot of difference between the good teams in the National League and the good teams in League Two. It's that bottleneck between the National League and League Two that often means the bottom half of League Two is much worse than the top half of the National League. And these promoted teams do often do very well. So, I mean, if we can, I mean, imagine if we did four promotions in a row, I could only take credit for three of them. But surely at that point, the board would give me a, a sensible contract befitting the work that I've done. Surely. Berry with the in-swinger. Goalkeeper gets there ahead of him. And it, uh, the, the highlight just kind of ends. It's Clayton with the throw, though. Gives it to Musa. Back with Clayton again. No one in the middle, or no striker in the middle, because Musa had drifted out wide. Young instead decided to step in and become the central man to aim at. Dave is playing it in to Young, who's still in the middle, and he's grabbed himself a goal as well. Oh, my word. We look like a good team again. This is, this is a, it's a very, very, very good team that needs to play in a different ground because the nets were going absolutely bananas again there. I don't know what I'm supposed to do about it, folks. I, uh, hopefully, hopefully next patch from Sports Interactive fixes that problem. In the meantime, I'm, gonna, I'm doing my best to just ignore it when it happens, but, oh, it's so frustrating. Right, Clayton has picked up an injury. Uh, Cam, Camerson is going to come on and play left back. Um, he's a right back, really. Um, but similar to what we had with Paul last year. I mean, Paul is still here. Um, but similar to what we've had with Paul, um, it's always handy having a fullback who can cover on both sides, the way both Clayton and Paul can now. It's a little bit of a shame to see Clayton go off of an injury. Like, like I said before, it's his first start of the season. He was uh, he was a really important player for us last year, our top assist provider last year. And this was his first opportunity this year. And I hope he's not 
got himself a big boy injury that's going to leave him out of the team for a significant amount of time because with the team playing as well as they are, it's very easy to move on beyond a player who's out of the team injured for a while. Oh my word, Yusuf very nearly curling one into the top corner there. He has started this season like he means it. Goodness me. 3-0 up now and just absolutely cruising. I mean, look at those match stats. Walsall haven't even had, haven't even had a shot on target, which does minimise the the worries I had around Walsh when you're making sure your opponents don't even test him. Um, a Camrich is going to come off. We're going to bring on Leahy to play on that left-hand side. That's new Leahy, not old Leahy, um, but he can play anywhere across the attack. Um, and we're also going to take off Adam Berry, bring on Connor Grant, and just basically continue to try things out, keep players fresh. I love having seven substitutes and being able to use five of them. That is going to be huge for player development and just general squad happiness, rotation, that kind of thing. Um, Olcott can come off and Brooke can come on. And then I think we'll take off Lewis Brown and Reese Bennett can come. I think this is a debut for Bennett. I don't think we played him in midweek either. So I think that's Reese Bennett's Tamworth debut alongside Kirk Curry, which could end up being the 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 partnership that we use back there if we do get that offer for Lewis Brown. Because remember, Brown still attracting interest from bigger clubs. We've not sold him yet, but the transfer window is still open for, I mean, three more weeks. We, we've, we're going to get half a dozen games under our belts before the window closes, which seems like a very strange position to put a transfer window, but I know it happens like that in real life as well. It's bonkers. Folks, that is a very good start to the season. What do the media think? Yeah, they're starting to realise we're actually quite a good team. We are charging up the leagues. I just need the board to give me a sensible contract. What have I got to do? Shall I ask them again? Hi, board. Uh, can I? Yeah, new contract, please. I would like a new contract on proper new contract money because it's only going to take the first guy to get sacked from a League One club or a championship club. And I am surely going to be attracting attention this time and will be on my way. And I don't want to leave. But they have to give me a reason to stay. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.